Hi, I'm Christina and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. So I have been to the library recently and picked up another stack of books, so I'll just talk you through them. So I have a couple of books that are from prize lists and I have a couple of books from authors that I've read before and I've got one um, from someone that I've never read before and I just fancied giving it a go. So let's start with the prize listed books. So both of these are on the shortlist for the Orwell Prize for Political Fiction this year and the first of which is The Story of the Forest by Linda Grant. Now I am just <laughs> trying to work out which ones from the prizes I want to prioritise because I've been following the Women's Prize and the International Booker Prize and the Orwell Prize and the actual Booker Prize and I just do not have the time to read all of these books. Unfortunately, I would love to just <laughs> read and read as many as I can, um, but I don't have time. Um, so I'm trying to prioritise the ones I am most excited to read. And I think this one looks really, really good. I only know a little bit about it because I was trying to go into this prize knowing only a little bit about it. I did my Orwell Prize reaction video and kind of talked about my TBR. So I will link that down below if you want to hear more about them because I did a little bit of a deep dive then. But this one is set in 1913 and we're following um, a girl and her family. So that's all I want to know about it. I just think um, it looks really good. And I've heard a couple of people who really enjoyed this one. So that's that one. And then I also have from the same prize, um, A House for Alice by Diana Evans. And again, don't know too much about it, um, but it's set in London and we're following, um, I think it's a generational story with a couple of different people. And also it talks about the Grenfell Tower disaster. So I think that one's gonna be quite a moving read, but also interested in that one. And then I have three books from authors that I have previously read. So this is why they're here. I'm looking forward to either reading their newer books or I'm going back and wanting to read their backlist books. So one of them is The It Girl by Reef Ware. And I think out of all of these, this is the one I'm most excited for. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna pick this one up first. Um, but it's always hard to say what you're most excited for. So I've actually read two books by Ruth Ware. Um, the other one was a couple of years ago when I just started Booktube. That was The Turn of the Key and I really enjoyed that one. I gave it four stars. And then I've also read The Lion Game by her and that was quite a few years ago, way before I started Booktube. And I gave that one three stars, but I remember enjoying it. It was a good solid three star. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to read one of her more recent ones. I don't think this is the very most recent one. I think that one's called Zero Days. I think this is the one that was released last year. So yeah, this is about a girl who is at Oxford University and she's called April and she gets murdered and she's essentially the it girl. She's the girl that everybody wants to be friends with, the girl that everyone kind of wants to be, but obviously somebody wanted her dead. So yeah, I think I'm going to prioritise this one out of all of these. And then one of the other ones from an author I have previously read is The Taking of Annie Fawn by CJ Tudor. So I've read two books by CJ Tudor. I have read The Chalk Man, which I enjoyed. I think I gave that one three stars, but it was probably worth four stars, to be honest, because I still think about that book to this day. And I've also read The Burning Girls by her and I really enjoyed that one. I gave it five stars. Um, it was probably one of the best thriller horror books that I read last year in 2022. Um, so I thought I was going to go back and read some of her backlist books and this one um, looks really good and I don't know too much about it. I generally don't look too much into thrillers and horrors. Let's have a little look. So um, someone's gone missing. She was disappeared from her own bed. There were searches appeals, everyone thought the worst, and then miraculously, after 48 hours, she came back, though she couldn't or wouldn't say what had happened to her. So that sounds really interesting. She's really good at writing kind of dark, twisty, um, little bit of supernatural elements, kind of thriller slash horror novels. Um, so looking forward to picking that one up if I'm kind of in the mood for it. Um, so that's that one. And then the last one from an author that I have previously read, is Still Life by Sarah Winman. So this one, I've read 
two books by this author. So the first one I read by her was quite a few years ago now, again, way before Booktube, and it was Tin Man, absolutely loved it. It was one of my favourite books in the year in which I read it, and one of my favourite books of all time. I love that book, I think it's wonderful, and I'd highly recommend it if you haven't read it. And then this year I read another one of her books, I read her debut novel, When God Was a Rabbit, and I really loved it, I gave it five stars. It's one of the best books that I've read this year, and I think it's really, really good. Out of the two, I would say Tin Man is my favourite. Nothing is going to beat Tin Man, I don't think. Well, maybe this, but I don't think anything is probably going to beat Tin Man for me. Um, and this is her most recent novel. And I think this one, um, let's see. Oh yeah, so this is her most recent novel. And she's actually only written four books, including this one. So once I've read this one, I'll only have one more book by her, which I haven't read which is called A Year of Marvellous Ways. So let me just see what this one is about. And this one is set in Tuscany. Um, and I think it's set during the war. So let's see. Yep, so it's set in 1944 in the ruined wine cellar of a Tuscan villa and the Allied troops advance and bombs fall all around them. Two strangers meet and share an extraordinary evening together. So it's about a young British soldier called Ulysses and it's by also about a sexagenarian art historian and possible spy, Evelyn Skinner. So it's just about two people who are kind of kindred spirits and they kind of just build up this friendship, obviously set in Tuscany and set in the war. So um, looking forward to reading that one. I just love the way that she writes. I think she writes so beautifully. I think Tim Mann is one of the most kind of beautiful written books that I've ever read. So I'm hoping for more of the same with this one. Uh, so let me put all those down. So the last book that I picked up from the library is a fantasy novel and it's A Marvellous Light by Freya Mask. And this one is a debut novel and it is a fantasy novel. Now I don't read a lot of fantasy, but this one is about magic and I love the themes of magic. So I wanted to give this one a go. This is the kind of fantasy that I generally really enjoy. So it's about someone who is trying to save their family estate from their late parents' excesses. A new job seems perfectly timed, however no one tells Robin that he'll be acting as a parliamentary liaison to a hidden society of magicians. So that sounds really, really good. Or worse, that the position is only open because his predecessor has gone missing. So yeah, sounds really good, kind of like magic and like politics of magic. So that sounds really interesting. So yeah, those are all of the books that I have out from the library. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I think, <laughs> I think that I'm going to prioritise the Ruth Ware book. Um, just because, I can't, I can't even explain why, just because I kind of just fancy picking it up, to be honest. I really enjoyed The Turn of the Key by her. And I just think it's time to read another Ruth Ware book in my life. And then um, probably want to pick up one of the books on the shortlist for the Orwell Prize. So either House for Alice or The Story of the Forest. So we'll see. So I, I'm going to say that I'm going to prioritise this one and then we'll, we'll see what actually happens. <laughs> so in terms of what I am currently reading, it's two books that I have out from my previous library haul, which was about a year, a year ago, goodness me. It was a month ago, not a year ago. <laughs> So I kind of go to the library every few weeks and more recently I've been picking up quite a big chunk of them um, I'm not obviously reading at the pace where I can read all of them um, but I'm just kind of picking and choosing and seeing which ones I fancy when I fancy reading them. I'm a bit of a mood reader. So I'm reading two books. Um, one of them is The Sentence by Louise Erdrich and this one was shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction last year in 2022. Now, I was really, really enjoying this book, really enjoying it, um, about halfway through, and I just kind of just wasn't enjoying reading it as much anymore. So I'm, a, I'm quite a long way through it, to be honest with you, and see how many, 295 pages. So I've only got like, would you say like a fifth to go? So I'm definitely going to continue on with it, but I'm just wondering if I just wasn't really in the mood to read it at the time. Um, no real reason, like, there's not the fault of the book. I just kind of lost interest in a way. Um, so I definitely want to finish it. 
at some stage but I just every time I've had a little bit of spare time to read I've just been like I don't want to pick up this one I just have not been in the mood so I started another book and then a similar thing has happened but I'm kind of not really liking this one like I am enjoying the sentence it is a good book um, but this one I'm not really enjoying so I've started Catherine House which is a fantasy novel and it's about a group of people who go to kind of a university idea and uh, called Catherine House and there's kind of maybe fantastical elements, supernatural elements kind of idea and we're following um, this main character who is in her first year she's got some kind of dark things in her past that she's running away from and I'm not, I'm not enjoying it <laughs> I'm not enjoying it at all um, how many pages have I read? so yeah nearer the end than the beginning so let's see, I have read 195 pages and I was considering DNFing this one because I'm just not really enjoying it, not really liking the main character all that much, kind of finding her a little bit irritating as character goes, just because, just kind of her personality I suppose and just the way she approaches things and just the way it's written as well I'm not 100% keen on, so on some of the dialogue it just doesn't like ring true that people would say this especially not younger people I don't know it just yeah the dialogue feels a bit just a bit stilted and it doesn't really feel how young people today talk I guess um so not really enjoying this one don't really want to finish it but also mildly curious about what is actually happening and what actually is going to go on um so I may continue this or I may DNF it. If you have read it, I'd love to know what you think of it and if you think I should continue on. Like if I'm this far through and I'm not enjoying it, do you think I should probably DNF it or is the payoff at the end worth it? D let me know. Um, I'm, I'm not sure at the moment but I just know that when I wanted to read I haven't been in the mood to pick it up and I also haven't been in the mood to pick this one up. So I'm thinking now I'm going to start one of these other books in front of me which might be a terrible idea because I should probably finish one of the two books that I've currently started um, but you know when you're just not in the mood to read them so yeah that's what this is so I think when I've got a little bit of time to read I'm going to read Rufoir the Eight Girl next and that'll give me something a little bit different as well because this is kind of more kind of contemporary literary fiction I would say and this is kind of, I, I think it's trying to be fantasy. There's not really much fantastical elements, but I'm going to say it's fantasy. And yes, so maybe like a mystery thriller would be a nice change of pace and kind of get me out of whatever reading slump I seem to have fallen into, however that's happened. So yeah, so this is the plan. This one next. Hi, so I thought I would show you a couple of the things I have purchased for myself recently and do a little bit of a shopping update. So I bought myself three new dresses from Nobody's Child and I've been eyeing these up for a little while now, quite a few weeks, and then I saw that they had 15% off site-wide and I thought it's the perfect time to buy them now there's a bit of a discount code too. So the first one, and I think this one is my favourite, maybe, we'll see. 
and it's this gorgeous gorgeous dress and it's called let me just find it's called the pastel starlight mid axi dress now it's quite expensive it was 79 pounds but with the discount code i paid 67 pound 15 which is a little bit more than i normally pay for dresses um, i've just found that recently a lot of the quality of the dresses i've been getting are a little bit cheaper the quality is just not very good so i thought i'm going to spend a little bit more buy fewer and then just see just see what happens really so basically i fell in love with this dress and this was the whole reason i placed an order i just thought this was so so gorgeous so yeah it's just got all of these lovely pastel colors we got the pinks the purples the greens the yellows the oranges it just looks like summer in a dress to me and i absolutely love it and it's got this lovely little v-neck and then it's got all of these lovely little kind of button details down the front and it's a midi dress so it's quite long and yeah I love it and it's got these lovely kind of puffed out sleeves as well so very much <laughs> in love with that dress and now I've got two more dresses which are the exact same style but in different prints now these ones let me see what they're called so one of them is a postcard print dress and the other one is a seed packet dress so I'll show you the seed packet one first and it is called the fern cotton so this is the fern cotton line she does a collection maybe every year every six months or something and I have one other dress from hers from her previous collection and it was black with red hearts and yeah this is the fern cotton seed pocket print Cassidy Midaxi dress so these retail at £59 so a little bit cheaper than the other one a little bit more close what I'd normally pay and with the discount it was £50.15 and, and I just think again these are perfect for summer so it is obviously a Midaxi dress so it's quite long which I like and then it's just got this gorgeous seed packet print and I love it like there's the little sunflowers there's just so many seeds on it it looks so cute and it's got this little kind of frilly moment at the front and then it's kind of frilly here and it's got a square neck which I do like and in the back's quite a nice open back actually we just have this kind of tie here and then a bit of your back is open and yeah I just I love the print of this one I think it's going to be great for the summer <laughs> now when I first was eyeing these dresses up it was really really hot here and it was about 30 degrees nearly every day like 28 29 degrees 31 degrees and it was so so warm and now it is <laughs> just raining non-stop for the past few days it's still very warm it's quite muggy and um, we're not particularly the weather for these dresses but i'm sure we'll get a hotter summer later on so this is the same style of dress and it is called the postcard print cassidy midi dress and again it's the same price it was 59 pounds and i paid 50 pound 15 pence with the discount code so let's see so yeah it's exactly the same style and i love it it's got that lovely square neck it's got the little frilly bits and then at the back it's frilly again and it just ties at the top i've not tied it um and yeah i just love the print on this one it's got so many little places on it so it's got like a little thailand bit over here and it's got marrakesh and it's got santorini which is one of my dream places to go i love this one here little postcard yeah I just love them and I pretty much have started collecting postcards from every place I visit to abroad so I think this <laughs> works perfectly with it and yeah there's just just love the print just so many I think there's a Tuscany down here where's Tuscany down I want to show you that one because that one is also really pretty yeah with the little houses so yeah love them I've ordered quite a few things from Nobody's Child over the last few years I'd say they're one of my favourite brands now I think Nobody's Child and Joe Browns are kind of my go-to brands for clothes and yeah just so so lovely all of the prints are so unique and I just think <laughs> they're just gonna look gorgeous in the hot summer weather and hopefully be taking them on holidays and stuff so yeah just the seed packet print is gorgeous as well I think when I tried them on I was expecting to like the postcard print more because it's kind of more blues rather than greens and I thought blues are more my colour but when I actually tried on the seed packet one I think this one is my favourite if I was only to keep one I think I would keep that one um, and obviously the reason I purchased the whole order was this gorgeous pastel dress I'm just in love with this dress it's just just such a fun happy colour so yeah <laughs> that was what I have treated myself to recently and 
looking forward to wearing them in the summer. So I thought I'd show you a little bit more of a shopping haul update. I've just shown you the dresses that I have purchased recently and I've also tried to purchase some things for the summer and the summer holiday is coming up so we're going away on holiday in September and I needed some new flip-flops. So I had a pair of flip-flops and honestly I've only had them a number of years, maybe four to five years I would say and I've probably worn them just a handful of times because obviously with the pandemic I've not really been on holiday all that much and have no reason to wear flip-flops <laughs> in England um, so I've not really worn them but when I went to look at them and um, just to kind of see what I'm going to take and different things like having a look at the things I'm going to have to buy you know what doesn't fit anymore or what I want to update blah 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 um, I looked at my flip-flops and they were completely falling to pieces. So yeah, like I say, I think I've worn them maybe two to three times on a holiday, maybe five years ago or something. And all of the front bit, like all of the plastic was crumbling off, which is pretty bad actually. And they weren't cheap, they were relatively expensive. Um, they were from Debenhams, which doesn't really exist anymore. I think it might still be online, but you know, the shop doesn't exist. Yeah, all of this plastic was kind of crumbling off and underneath it, it was like a different color. So it looked really obvious. And I was like, oh, maybe I could just kind of get away with them. But literally every time I touched them, plastic was just crumbling off the front of them. So I thought, no, it's time for them to go in the bin, unfortunately. So I've bought myself some new flip-flops and I'm quite pleased with these because I think they're quite a good price too. So they are these ones from Adidas and they're called the Adidas Sportswear Adelette Sliders in white and pink. So I bought these from ASOS and they were £18 and then they were reduced to £14.40 in the sale. So I'm quite chuffed with that, like £14.40 is a pretty good price I think for a pair of flip-flops. I was looking in the shops just to see what kind of flip-flops were available and honestly they were all kind of like £30 upwards which is I think is a lot of money for a pair of flip-flops that I'm going to wear maybe one or two weeks a year <laughs> you know if I'm lucky um so yeah didn't want to spend loads and loads of money on them but I like these and they're quite comfortable they look, they look quite nice and the bikinis I have are that I bought the previous year I've got a pink one and like a pinky purpley one I would say and a purple one so yeah I've got one purple one and one that's like pinky purple ombre so the pink should go nicely with both of those so yeah chuff with those under £15 £14.40 quite pleased with those hi so it is the end of the week and I thought I would give you my reading update I have started The It Girl by Ruth Ware and I am really enjoying this one so far. So I have read, let's see how many pages, 121 pages, so I'm about a third of the way in I would say and yes it has taken me all week <laughs> to read those pages. It's been a very busy week and yeah that's all I could manage to read but I am really really enjoying it. I think it's such a good book. I am so intrigued by the story, so as it's kind of a mystery thriller, I don't want to give too many spoilers, I'll just give you a little bit of a feel for it. So basically it's set at Oxford University and we have two main characters and one of which uh, gets murdered and it's in two timelines, it's in the past and it's in the present and in the present we are following her roommate and her best friend and in the past we're kind of watching them as they first start university. So our main character is her roommate and we're following her from the very first day she arrives at university as she's unpacking etc and then we kind of just go through the timeline with her and then in the present day she is working in a bookstore and she is living in Edinburgh and she is currently pregnant so that's kind of where she has, is at her life. I think she's about 28, 29. So yes, yes, it's been 10 years since April's death. So if they were around 18, I think she's about 28 now. So yeah, really enjoying it. It's really intriguing. It's very well written and it does kind of, I can tell that the same person wrote this as The Turn of the Key. It has that kind of very well written, very intriguing, and you're just kind of trying to figure out what's happened. I have a few theories, I think, whether I'm going to be right, I don't know, but I've got a couple of things in my mind that I think might be the answer, perhaps. Uh, but yeah, really enjoying it, really like the characters, um, they're very different characters, so kind of April is a very um, 
kind of beautiful, popular girl who is from an incredibly wealthy family and she just has all of these designer clothes and shoes and she's kind of kitting out their little shared room in her bedroom with really expensive stuff. She has really expensive clothes and she's kind of letting the other girl borrow them a little bit. And on the other hand, um, the other girl is from like a state school, from like a normal kind of working class background uh, with just her mum and um, so the other girl as well. They have people who work for them. So when she goes in, um, someone's unpacking in her bedroom and like putting clothes away. And obviously the other girl kind of just thinks <laughs> that it's probably her father and introduce herself and she's like oh no that's not my dad this is just someone who works for my parents so they come from very different backgrounds I would say very different lifestyles and they're both really well written characters so yes very very intrigued have lots of theories wondering where it's going to go and I think this one's probably set for like a four star or five star it's very good I'm very much enjoying it predicting it to be about a four star or a five star. I think I gave the turn of the key four stars, um, but on reflection, it was excellent. Perhaps it was worthy of a five, perhaps. <laughs> but this one, definitely on par for kind of four star, five star. I am enjoying it. So yes, I will leave it there for now. And hopefully next week I'll be able to finish this one. And if not finish it, hopefully I'll be able to make some progress with it. I haven't picked up either of the other two books that I was currently reading. I haven't DNF'd them. It is The Sentence and Catherine House. Still unofficially kind of reading them. I haven't read a single page of either of them. Uh, this is the only thing I've read this week. But yeah, haven't DNF'd them. Still planning to continue them as of this moment. But if you've read them, let me know what you think of them and if you think I should carry on. So thanks so much for watching. Please do like the video if you've liked it. And please do subscribe if you'd like to hear more of me talking about books. I'll see you in the next one.